Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue with the next part of our topic on resistors. In part one, I shared with you how to identify resistors and how to read the values of four band resistors, five band resistors, and SMD resistors. If you're working in electronics repair, you may know that in reality, there are more than 100 common resistor values um, produced by manufacturers. However, not every technician will have all of these resistor values ready for replacement. Even if you have prepared a wide range of resistor values during repair work, you may still encounter special values that you simply do not have. That is why, to create any desired resistor value, we can combine several resistors with different values, either in series or in parallel, to achieve the exact resistance we need. In today's lesson, I will guide you through how to calculate the power rating of a resistor, how to connect resistors in series and in parallel, and the practical applications of resistors in electronic circuits. Now, let's begin our lesson. Since this part involves quite a lot of calculations, I recommend that you prepare a notebook to take notes. This will make the lesson easier to understand and much easier to remember. Part one, we will learn about the power rating of a resistor. Definition, the power rating of a resistor is the amount of electrical energy that the resistor consumes or changes into heat in one unit of time. In simple words, when electric current flows through a resistor, electrons collide with atoms in the material and create heat. This heat is the power consumed by the resistor. When we connect a resistor to a circuit, the resistor itself consumes a certain power called P. We can calculate this power using the following formulas. P equals U is I. P equals I squared eps R. P equals U squared R, where P is power measured in watts. U is the voltage across the resistor in volts. I is the current through the resistor in amperes. R is the resistance value in ohms. From these formulas, we can see the power consumed by a resistor depends on the current flowing through it or the voltage across it. We can calculate this power before we put the resistor into the circuit. If we use a resistor with a power rating smaller than the actual power it will consume, the resistor will burn. In practice, we usually choose a resistor with a power rating two times higher than the actual power to make sure it works safely. Practical meaning, every resistor has a power rating. For example, 0 0.25 watts, 0 0.5 watts, 1 watt, 5 watts, and so on. If the actual power is higher than the rated power, the resistor will overheat and burn. Example, a resistor R equals 100 ohms with a voltage U equals 10 volts, P equals U squared, but R equals 10 squared, die to 100 equals 1 watt. This means the resistor must have a power rating of at least mod watt to work safely. Next, I will give you a clear example of a resistor burning because it exceeds its power rating. Please look at the screen. In the diagram, the supply is VCC at 12 volts. All resistors have the same value, 120 ohms. However, their power ratings are different. When both switches K1 and K2 are closed, each resistor consumes the same power. P equals U squared divided by R. 12 squared divided by 120 equals 1 1.2 watts. When we close K1, this resistor has a higher power rating than the power it consumes, so it works normally and does not burn. When we close K2, this resistor has a lower power rating than the power it consumes, so the resistor will burn out. In other words, a resistor with enough power rating is like having a large water pipe, big enough for the water to flow through without heating up or breaking. A resistor that exceeds its power rating is like using a small, thin, fragile plastic pipe, but forcing it to handle water at very high pressure. At first, it will heat up, change color, and then leak or even burst. Now, let's learn about resistors in series. Resistors in series are when the resistors are connected one after another in a single path so that the electric current flows through each resistor one at a time from the first to the last. When resistors are connected in series, the total resistance is equal to the sum of all the individual resistors. We have the formula R total equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Another important point is that the electric current flowing through resistors in series will have the same value at every point in the circuit. In other words, I equals U1 divided by R1 equals U2 divided by R2 
equals u3 divided by r3. From this formula, we can see that uh, the voltage drop across each resistor in a series connection is directly proportional to the value of that resistor. The larger the resistor, the greater the voltage drop across it. To explain this part in more detail, the electric current flowing through resistors in series has the same value at every point. When resistors are connected in series, the current has only one single path to travel. That means at any point in the circuit, the value of the current, I, is exactly the same. We can write this as I equals U1 divided by R1 equals U2 divided by R2 equals U3 divided by R3. This is simply the expression of Ohm's law. U1 is the voltage drop across resistor R1. U2 is the voltage drop across resistor R2. U3 is the voltage drop across resistor R3. Because the current I through each resistor is the same, we have I equals U1 divided by R1 equals U2 divided by R2 equals U3 divided by R3. This means if a resistor has a larger value, then in order to keep the same current I, the voltage drop across it will be greater. When we say the, the voltage drop across resistors in series is directly proportional to the value of the resistor, we mean that the bigger the resistor, the more voltage it will lose as the current passes through it. This relationship follows exactly the formula U equals E multiplied by R. Let's do a few examples so we can understand this more clearly. Example 1. Resistors. R1 equals 2 ohms, 2 equals 3 ohms, R3 equals 5 ohms. Power supply, 20 volts. Step 1. Calculate the total resistance. R total equals 2 ohms plus 3 ohms plus 5 ohms, which equals 10 ohms. Step 2. Calculate the current. I equals 20 volts divided by 10 ohms, which equals 2 amperes. Step 3. Calculate the volt voltage drop across each resistor. U1 equals I multiplied by R1 equals 2 amperes times 2 ohms equals 4 volts. U2 equals 2 amperes times 3 ohms equals 6 volts. U3 equals 2 amperes times 5 ohms equals 10 volts. Conclusion. The larger the resistor, the greater the voltage drop. Here, R3 is the largest, so its voltage drop is also the largest. Example 2. Resistors. R1 equals 4 ohms. R2 equals 6 ohms. R3 equals 10 ohms. Power supply, 40 volts. Step 1. Calculate the total resistance. R total equals 4 ohms plus 6 ohms plus 10 ohms, which equals 20 ohms. Step 2. Calculate the current. I equals 40 volts divided by 20 ohms, which equals 2 amperes. Step 3. Calculate the voltage drop across each resistor. U1 equals 2 amperes times 4 ohms equals 8 volts. U2 equals 2 amperes times 6 ohms equals 12 volts. U3 equals 2 amperes times 10 ohms equals 20 volts. Conclusion, R3 has a resistance value that is twice as large as R2, so the voltage drop across it is also twice as high as the voltage drop across R2. Let's continue and learn about parallel resistor connections. A parallel connection means the resistors are connected in such a way that both ends of each resistor are connected to the same two points in the circuit. This means the voltage across each resistor is always the same. The current will split flowing through each resistor depending on its value. Key characteristics of a parallel circuit, the equivalent resistance, denoted as REQ, is always smaller than the smallest resistor in the group. Formula for calculating the equivalent resistance of two parallel resistors. 1 divided by REQ equals 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2. Frac 1 REQ frac R1 plus frac 1 R2. If there are more resistors, we simply add more terms. Frac 1 REQ frac 1 R1 plus frac 1 R2 plus frac 1 R3 plus dots. Special case, if all the resistors have the same value, the equivalent resistance is the value of one resistor divided by the number of resistors.
Example, let's imagine we have three resistors, each with a value of 6 ohms, connected in parallel. Step 1. Apply the special case formula for equal resistors. Take the value of one resistor, which is 6 ohms, and divide it by the number of resistors, which is 3. 6 divided by 3 gives us 2 ohms. So the equivalent resistance of this parallel circuit is 2 ohms. Now, let's talk about current in a parallel circuit. When resistors are connected in parallel, the voltage across each resistor is always the same. This means the current flowing through each resistor is inversely proportional to its resistance value. According to Ohm's law, I equal frac UR. If R is large, I is small. If R is small, I is large. In other words, the smaller the resistance, the greater the current through it, and vice versa. Uh, the formula for calculating the current in each parallel branch is I1 equals U divided by R1, I2 equals U divided by R2, I3 equals U divided by R3. For example, if a parallel circuit has a voltage source source of 12 volts, R1 is 6 ohms and R2 is 3 ohms. I1 will be 12 divided by 6, which is 2 amperes. I2 will be 12 divided by 3, which is 4 amperes. As you can see, R2 is smaller than R1, so the current through R2 is larger. And once again, let's remember, the voltage across all resistors in a parallel circuit is always the same. This is the most important characteristic of a parallel connection. So we already know there are two basic ways to connect resistors. One is in series, and the other is in parallel. Now, what if we combine both methods? In that case, we create a mixed resistor circuit. This method allows us to achieve a more optimal resistance value, one that fits the needs of the circuit. Let me give you an example, so it's easier to imagine. Let's say we need a resistor of 9 kilo ohms. We can connect two resistors of 15 kilo ohms in parallel and then connect them in series with a resistor of 1.5 kilo ohms. Step one, connect two resistors of 15 kilo ohms in parallel. R parallel equal frac R1 times R2, R1 plus R2. Substitute the values, arc 15K times 15K plus 15K frac 225K 30K equals 7.5K French omega. Step two. Connect in series with a resistor of 1.5 kilo ohms, R total equals R parallel plus R3. Substitute the values, R total equals 7.5K plus 1.5K equals 9K. And now, let's move on to the applications of resistors. Resistors are found everywhere in electronic devices. That's why they are a very important and indispensable component. In a circuit, resistors have several key functions, and one of them is, first, to limit the current flowing through a load to a suitable level. For example, uh, imagine we have a light bulb rated at 9 volts, but our power supply is 12 volts. In this case, we can connect the light bulb in series with a resistor to drop an extra 3 volts across that resistor. As shown in the illustration, we can calculate the required resistance value and its power rating as follows. The light bulb has a voltage of 9 volts and a power of 2 watts. So the current is I frac PU equal frac 2 9. This current is also the current flowing through the resistor. Since the supply is 12 volts and the bulb needs 9 volts, we need to drop 3 volts across the resistor. Therefore, the resistance value is R equals frac UI equal frac 3 2 4 9 frac 27 2 equals 13.5 omega. The power dissipated by the resistor is P equals U times I equals 3 times frac 6, 9 watts. So we must choose a resistor with a power rating greater than frac 6, 9 watts to ensure safe operation. Another application of resistors is connecting them as a voltage divider to create a desired voltage from a given input voltage. With a voltage divider, we can obtain an output voltage U1 as we wish. 
for example, from a 12 volt source, say 12 volts as shown in the diagram, by using a voltage divider made of R1 and R2, we can obtain a voltage U1. The value of U1 depends on the values of the two resistors R1 and R2. According to the formula, frac frac U1 R1 plus R2, read as U1 over U equals R1 over open parentheses R1 plus R2 close parentheses, or U1 equals U times frac R R1 plus R2. Read as U1 equals U times R1 over open parenthesis R1 plus R2 close parenthesis. By changing the value of resistor 1 or resistor 2, we can obtain the output voltage U1 exactly as we need. In addition, resistors are also used in circuits for biasing transistors and in RC oscillator circuits. We will analyze these two applications in more detail when we study the lessons on transistors and on oscillator circuits. So we have now completed our study of the resistor component. I hope that through this video you have gained a lot of useful knowledge. And in the next video we will explore the second type of component, which is the capacitor. This is also a component that is very important and very prone to failure in an ECU. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any valuable and informative videos from this channel. Goodbye, and see you next time.